Gang, I am your boy George. Yep, say it. The true trucker. Put two across your heart. Yes, and give me a do sign out there. Say if you true, true. All right. As we break bad today in the trucking industry, I'm getting ready to run you guys down through there. Y'all ready to go? Watch this video. All right. Let me pause for the cause. If you have not hit my subscribe button, it's Tayo time. Hit it. Hit it. Hit that subscribe button right now. I can't keep making these videos without y'all. Right? You'll watch everybody else. You watch that girl shake it, shake it, shake it. But you won't hit my subscribe button. Hit my subscribe button so I keep doing this for y'all. Tell your sister, your mama about me, the true truck driver. All right? Tell your friend about me, the true truck driver. All right. Pause for the cause. From a dad out there in Medellin, Colombia, Cecilia. Y'all enjoy yourself. Enjoy yourself. That's what family's about. All right? Y'all enjoy yourself in the trip out there in Medellin, Colombia. All right? Hit that subscribe button. But as your boy, I am George. Let's go down through here talking about these trucks and these trailers, right? That's what we came here to talk about, trucks and trailers. I told y'all I was in logistics, so let's get to the logistics. If you are looking to purchase your very first truck and trailer, be careful. Be real careful. You got to remember the prices are up. They're high. They're astronomical. Okay? You don't have to go out there and buy one right now. Unless you just really want to get in the truck and really bad. Because I seen some prices the other week that made me sick. And that was for a used truck. You're talking about $90,000, 550,000 miles on it. Ain't no way. Nope. I'm not doing it. Nope. Mm -mm. I go get me a Fr Sam Fred Sanford and Son truck and pull that, that crap around first. Because that payment going to be about two grand, 2200 a month. Yeah, yeah. It's going to cost you. Now, the reason why I'm telling you about trucks and trailers is because you need to understand when you first get into trucking, buy your equipment, man. If you got finances, you got the, the money, buy the right truck for you don't go out there just because you see a truck for twenty thousand dollars and buy that truck all right some of them don't haul that good international peterbilt freight liner volvo western star look for the truck that you want to be able to do certain things with they got heavy haul trucks that that's that Peterbilt. You'll never see it on side of the road. That thing has a Caterpillar motor in it and a motor that will snatch your roof loose. It haul cows, chickens, heavy haul products down the road, man, with flatbeds, uh, you name it. That's a monster of a truck. It's also a monster if you get a 2023. And some of them can be used. And it still costs you an arm and a leg. But guess what? It's a dang good truck, man. Yeah. It's a dang good truck. I mean, really good. It'll pull it. Everybody talking about going up mountain and they going up with 43,000 pounds, 10 miles an hour with the flashes on and everything like that because they going up so slow. But then when they come down, my dad would call it a dragonfly. You know what I mean? You drag uphill and fly down, right? That Peterbilt gonna keep rocking and rolling. It goes up the hill and never miss a beat, right? You have a Volvo, right? It's a very expensive truck. Everybody don't have the equipment. When that truck break down on the road, let me tell you something, it's gonna cost you, buddy. You know why? Everybody don't have the software programs in order to hook up to that Volvo truck. There is not a dealership everywhere like there is a freight liner. I'm not selling freight liners. I'm just telling you. Do your research before you start buying these trucks. Yeah. Because if you notice the TA, they got freight liner parts. I don't care what it is. You walk in there right now, they got some freight liner parts. Or they would drive to a freight line and go get those parts. Freight line that usually stays open at 12 o'clock midnight. Volvo normally is closed around 8, 9 o'clock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes they might, might be open a little late. 
But this is a very expensive truck to work on. Is a Volvo. Yeah. The Peterbilt is the same way, but a lot of places they're going to have those parts ready for you. Yeah. Those Caterpillar parts, they're going to be everywhere. It's going to be a dealership somewhere, right? The Freightline is going to have dealerships. International. I don't really know about them a whole lot. I just know I wouldn't buy one. That's just my preference. I never have liked them. I don't think I ever will. But to each his own, right? Because I started with a Volvo and realized the hard way. I messed up. I shouldn't have did that because it was very expensive. When the AC went out, everybody couldn't work on that AC unit. I had to take it back to Volvo, three, four thousand dollars. When the rear end went out, that was a special order because ain't nobody had that, right? So every time something happened to it, I couldn't just have anybody just plug up to it and tell me what was wrong with it. Was it a hard working truck? Yes, it was. It ran me over a million five hundred miles, 500,000 miles. It only had very few little problems, right? So that's why I tell you guys, be careful with what the truck it is you buy, right? That Volvo is a nice turn ratio truck. It's quiet on the inside, but it's not really meant to be a heavy haul truck for 43. It's meant for 19, 20,000 pounds, right? Yeah, it's one of them type of trucks. But is it a nice sleeper? Yeah, it's, it's great. Got great gadgets and everything on the inside of it, but guess what? Hey, do you want your manual or a stick shift, you know, or automatic? So before you jump out here just saying, I want a truck, do your research. Go look at the trucks, ask the questions. You know, with the turn ratio, you need to know this. Some of them trucks have a bad turn ratio in them. Yeah, if you went to school, that you know the turn. The Volvo got the best one. I mean, cut the wheel real hard. Freightline is another one. Cut the wheel real hard. Turn it back. Back it into the hole. The trailers. What do you want to uh, haul? You have to think about that. Because if you get a dry van... You're only limited to dry van stuff. What a dry van can hold. Do you want a plated dry van, right? A translucent dry van, which none of the shippers want to see you come in there with anyway because the tops will tear out of them. Do you need a, a dry van with a lift gate? See, this is specialized equipment to make you more money when you have a lift gate, a pallet jack just like a step deck. That's a heavy haul specialized product. Those guys, they'll make in one week, one load, what a dry van does all week long, five days a week. Off of one load, they'll make that money. All right? So you have to be able to understand what are you looking for? Now, if you go out here and you get a reefer, a reefer can haul cold and dry because you see it posted up on the low boys have you if you ever been to low boys it said this load calls for a reefer or a dry van that is why you don't see a lot of product coming out of the state of florida is because the reefer drivers will actually eat up the dry van loads they'll take them away from them because there's not a lot of product being made in florida besides produce you know, and that season's getting ready to come open where you have a lot of produce leaving the state, right? So you think about that, but you also have to think about if I get this reefer, I might be up all the time at two o'clock in the morning because a lot of receivers, that's when you make those deliveries. Two and three o'clock in the morning. Yeah, you got to call a broker, get a comm check because the lumper said it's going to be $450 to have your truck unloaded at four o'clock in the morning. So either you got the cash on you or you sit around and wait to receive your bill laden because the broker's not in or the broker calls you back and tell you he don't have EFS and he can't pay for it. You're gonna have to pay out of pocket. Not us. Next thing it is, you wanna look for a trailer. If you get in the drive-in trailer, 
make sure you get one with logistics post a plated trailer with logistic posts 12 inches apart right that way it can have straps to go across each side to hold the product in place sometimes you haul trade shows and they want that product turned in their certain ways and they need those straps to be 12 inches apart or your vertical e-tracks to be 12 inches apart that drive-in plated trailer also hauls a lot of cans um bottles those things of nature and you can actually ask for what you really want out of the load if you have that plated trailer the flatbed the reason why i got out of flatbed work is because i stood on the top one day putting the tarp down and it started raining hell i was dirty stank and upset with myself that I had chose to do this, right? Now, it's four o'clock in the afternoon. I'm putting the chains and the straps on under the tarp. I'm dirty. I want to go to the truck stop, take a shower. And here it is, there's no parking spots available, right? So I got to park down the road and walk back to the truck stop or either get in my bed nasty. Now who wants to, you won't even get in your own bed at home nasty will you no all right so why would i do it in the truck i gotta get back there tomorrow night too clothes all dirty and stink right so that's why i got out of the flatbed work the reefer work i got out of that because i couldn't go to sleep with that motor running yeah that motor sometimes crank up one two o'clock in the morning quite often because the temperature needs to be negative 10 or 20. so when that temperature raise up that motor cuts on, and next thing you know, it's got to go a little while to get back to negative 10. So that's why I got out of that, because I couldn't sleep that good. Right? So to each his own, you have to pick your poison on what you want to do. Remember, this is the rest of your life messing around out here, trying to be successful in this trucking industry. So you have to pick the right truck, the right trailer for what you you want to do don't listen to other people tell you i made this amount of money guess what at the end of the day it's going to be you driving that truck unloading that trailer or untarping that trailer or being a lumper it all depends on what you want to do what's going to make you happy but guess what at the end of the day i am happy and i'm your boy george put two across your heart two and say you true true I am your boy, George. Hit that subscribe. Hit that like button. To all my people that want to come see me, come out June. In June. I'm going to put it up on my next episode. Come see me in June. I'm going to walk y'all down through there. We're going to have a big conference, man. Yeah, I'm going to bring in some truck drivers, insurance companies, you name it. Y'all hit me up. I am your boy, George. I am the true truck driver. Y'all stay true to the car.